Hi all, today I'm talking about location techniques of West Indian manatees, Trichinus manatus, in South America. So, what's the problem? West Indian manatees in South America are far more elusive than those in Florida for a number of reasons. Sightings are less common due to human interferences and their fear of predation due to bushmeat and wildlife trade. Research is often harder due to the uncertainty of location, because if you can't find your species, then you won't be able to research them. Through the literature, I have found three possible methods for dealing with these locating these manatees and how we may sort through these methods to find the best one or combination of the three. Method number one deals with sightings, which is the most common contingent method that works very well in Florida. If you've heard about it, that is one of the main ways that we observe manatees, but it doesn't work so well in South America. The pros to this is that manatees may be spotted by observers that are hidden or drones. They don't detect people if they are hidden and if you are in an area that is remote enough. And drones are often something that they aren't aware of. So if it's something foreign to them, but they're not necessarily scared of. Uh, it is a passive method that doesn't interfere with the species. So it potentially doesn't have drawbacks in that regard except that it will a little bit in the cons when I talk about that. Cons are that the elusiveness means it's hard to pinpoint areas for sighting. So if you spend most of your time looking for manatees in one area and they're not even there, you can end up wasting your time. Observer detection varies even among different levels of training. Sightings are dependent on group factors. If a manatee is by itself, you're gonna have less likely a chance to spot it or if it's with a group. And there are questionable observer motives, which is, why it's a bit of a pro and a con with the passive method because um, one of the reasons that these manatees are so elusive is that they're often hunted for their bushmeat a wildlife trade so as long as your observer doesn't have an emotive to help you out and then come back and hunt for the manatee for food it's a con in that regard method number two is thermal remote sensing it is a method that deals with showing the location taken from satellites, so aerial photography, and it can also be used to measure variation in land surface temperature, which is useful for potentially identifying habitats that might be more um, suitable for manatees, such as warmer habitats versus cold. So the pros to this is that aerial photography is cheap if you can get it online for free such from sites such as the U.S. Geological Survey. They have a large range of photos that span basically the entire earth. It can cover large spans of area. It is often given out in blocks of several kilometers by several kilometers and can help potentially narrow down areas to look in as another form of a passive method. The cons are that it does not guarantee manatee occupation. It only can help you pinpoint where it is unless you wanna go through these photos and zoom in and try to look for it blobs of that could potentially be manatees. It may not be useful in areas with a lot of canopy cover because you can't go through the canopy cover to take pictures and is a potentially lengthy process to go through hundreds of photos and narrow down the search. So method number three is bioacoustics, which is a fairly new method that uses wavelengths in aquatic habitats to measure the shape of the environment and moving things. The pros for this is the detection rate is high. Um, to use this method, you put the technology in the water, it sends out wavelengths and it bounces off things that are moving of a certain size. So if you program it to detect things of a specific size, you will get fairly accurate readings back. You can use it in large swaths and it is applicable to various habitats as a form of a passive method. Cons to this is though that the method is still being tweaked to suit various needs. And, and as I've come across in the research, I have not seen it applied to large mammals such as the manatee, but it's something that you can potentially adapt to it. And the cost may be expensive as there aren't as many uh, brands out there that are being produced. So as long as there are only a couple of brands that have this, it will continue to be expensive. So what should be done about the issue? Should we use old methods, new methods, or a combination of three? And while this answer varies on the needs and the questions of each of the different researchers, I believe that for the highest chance of success in locating these manatees, you should employ a combination of the three if you have the means and the capabilities to do so.
I would like to thank all the researchers that have contributed to the science that I have looked up, which includes these listed here. Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and comment, and I will get back to you as soon as I can.